12 days from now, a 33 billion ton interstellar visitor called 3i slash Atlas will dive past the sun at 80 times the speed of a bullet. And that's when things could go wrong. Its path is nearly aligned with the solar system's plane, something no random comet should do, raising the unsettling question, is this a natural wanderer or a machine designed to break at the sun and stop cold inside our solar system? While Earth's eyes will be blinded by the sun itself, the only thing we'll know for sure is what emerges on the other side. The real danger lies in what we won't see when it matters most. 3i slash Atlas hurtles toward the sun at nearly 55 kilometers per second, threading a path that defies the odds. Instead of plunging in from a steep, random angle, it skims the solar system's plane, tilted just 5 degrees from the ecliptic, the invisible disk where planets orbit. For a visitor from interstellar space, this is a statistical outlier. Random arrivals should scatter across the sky, most missing the ecliptic by wide margins. Yet here, the trajectory nearly overlays the planetary lanes, as if mapped to blend in with local traffic. Orbital simulations run by planetary scientists show that only a tiny fraction of interstellar objects should arrive this way. The ecliptic covers a slender slice of the celestial sphere. For a comet to approach within 5 degrees is like tossing a dart at a spinning globe and hitting a city street. The last two interstellar objects, Oumuamua and Borisov, came in from high inclinations, their paths slicing through the solar system at sharp angles. Atlas, by contrast, traces a retrograde arc, moving against the planetary current but almost flat along the disk. This alignment isn't just a curiosity, it changes what's possible at perihelion. An object approaching along the ecliptic meets the sun at a shallow angle, maximizing the window for any maneuver that takes advantage of solar gravity. If a spacecraft designer wanted to use the Oberth effect, a way to amplify a rocket burn by timing it for maximum speed near the sun, this is the geometry they'd choose. But the numbers alone are enough to raise eyebrows. Discovered July 1, 2025 by the Atlas survey in Chile, 3i slash Atlas is only the third confirmed interstellar object. Its inbound speed, over 200,000 km per hour, confirms it's not bound to the sun. Perihelion comes on October 29, 2025, at a distance of 1.36 astronomical units, just inside Mars's orbit. For now, orbital mechanics say it should slingshot past and vanish forever. Yet the trajectory's uncanny alignment with the ecliptic, coupled with its hyperbolic speed, leaves a lingering question. Is this a cosmic fluke or the signature of intent? As the clock ticks down to perihelion, the stakes rise. If Atlas is natural, it's a rare but explainable visitor. If not, the geometry alone suggests a level of planning and a purpose that goes far beyond chance. At perihelion, 3i slash Atlas will be moving at nearly 68 kilometers per second, more than twice the speed of the fastest spacecraft ever launched from Earth. This is the moment when the laws of orbital mechanics offer a unique loophole. The Oberth effect, first described by Hermann Oberth in 1929, states that a rocket burn is far more effective when performed at high speed deep inside a gravity well. In plain terms, the same push from a rocket engine does much more when the object is moving fastest, especially near a massive body like the Sun. The principle can be summed up in a simple rule. The change in orbital energy from a burn is proportional to the object's speed at the time of the burn. If a spacecraft fires its engines while crawling through deep space, it gets only a modest energy boost, but fire those same engines while whipping past the sun at 68 km per second and the effect multiplies. A 1 km per second change in velocity at this speed translates into a dramatic alteration of the object's trajectory. The math is clear. Kinetic energy increases with the square of speed. So, a burn at perihelion is like swinging a hammer at full force, not just tapping gently. For 3i slash Atlas, the theoretical path to capture would require a deceleration, what engineers call a retrograde burn, right at closest approach. The goal would be to shed enough velocity to shift from a hyperbolic escape trajectory to a closed, bound orbit around the Sun. Calculations show that to drop into a permanent solar orbit at 1.36 astronomical units, 
the object would need to lose roughly 20 kilometers per second at perihelion. That's an enormous ask. Even for the most efficient chemical or nuclear propulsion known, the amount of propellant needed would approach the mass of the object itself. Yet the Oberth effect is the only way to make such a maneuver remotely plausible with any known technology. Natural comets experience outgassing, jets of vapor and dust that can nudge their paths, but these forces are weak, chaotic, and rarely aligned with orbital needs. They might shift a comet's speed by a few meters per second, not tens of kilometers. A controlled, precisely timed retrograde burn at perihelion would stand out in the data. The resulting change in trajectory would be obvious to astronomers tracking its path after solar conjunction. The telltale sign, a sudden, step-like drop in outbound velocity far beyond what outgassing can explain. This is why the perihelion window matters. If 3i slash Atlas were to attempt a slowdown, the sun's gravity would act as the amplifier, turning a modest push into a major transformation. The mechanics are straightforward, the energy stakes immense. What remains is to watch for any sign that nature, or something else, has the means and intent to use them. From mid-October through early November 2025, 3i slash Atlas vanishes behind the sun from Earth's perspective. This isn't a fluke of bad luck, it's the result of a hardwired rule in astronomical observation. When a target drops below about 30 degrees from the sun, every major ground-based telescope is forced to look away. Solar avoidance isn't just about protecting sensitive optics from blinding light, it's a safety protocol built into the hardware and the software. The blackout window, stretching from October 22nd to November 7th, means that as 3i slash Atlas races through perihelion, no direct images or spectra can be collected from Earth. Space-based observatories face the same limits. The Hubble and James Webb telescopes are programmed never to point within 50 to 85 degrees of the Sun, eliminating any chance of a last-minute look. Even TESS, with its wide-field cameras, is locked out by solar elongation rules. The Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter, both designed for close solar studies, are pointed sunward and rarely risk slewing off axis for comet science. Their instruments are optimized for plasma and magnetic fields, not faint objects at the edge of their fields of view. Mars orbiters, briefly better situated, attempted risky snapshots as 3i slash Atlas skimmed past in early October. But the object was 50,000 times fainter than their usual targets, and preliminary images from the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter were dismissed by the ESA team as likely noise. No confirmed detections have been released. For now, the only certainty is absence. A multi-week span when any dramatic change, natural or otherwise, could occur unobserved. When the object reappears near dawn in November, astronomers will be left searching for evidence after the fact, piecing together what happened in the dark. Brightness is supposed to be a proxy for mass. For 3i slash Atlas, that assumption is now under fire. Photometric readings, calibrated against standard comet reflectivity, put the object's mass at roughly 33 billion tons, a figure that would make it one of the heaviest natural visitors in recent memory. Yet when planetary dynamicists ran the numbers after the October 3rd Mars flyby, the result was silence. At a distance of just 29 million kilometers, a body of that size should have nudged Mars's orbit, or at least shown up as a tiny anomaly in the navigation data from orbiters. Instead, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and ESA's Trace Gas Orbiter reported no measurable perturbation. The Deep Space Network's tracking logs showed nothing above background noise. This isn't just a matter of missed signals. In 2014, Comet Siding Spring's much closer flyby of Mars left a detectable fingerprint in the planet's trajectory, even though it was smaller and lighter than Atlas is supposed to be. Here, with a mass estimate orders of magnitude higher, the effect is missing entirely. The discrepancy has not gone unnoticed. Astrodynamics teams have cross-checked the orbital solutions hunting for any unexplained drift in Mars's motion or in the timing of spacecraft signals. The answer remains the same. No gravitational tug, no residuals, 
no evidence for a massive solid core. Some suggest the mass is simply overestimated, that Atlas's brightness could be inflated by dust or an unusually reflective surface. Others point to the possibility of a hollow or highly porous structure, a cosmic shell rather than a stone. The spin rate, measured from periodic changes in brightness, hints at a body that rotates faster than a solid chunk of this size should allow. For now, the numbers refuse to add up. A bright, fast-spinning object with negligible gravity, an equation that points toward a hollow shell, whether built by nature or something else. Spectroscopists tracking 3i slash Atlas in mid-September logged a coma stretching 180,000 kilometers, an envelope of gas and dust that dwarfs the nucleus itself. The dominant molecule in these measurements is hydrogen cyanide, released at a rate of 4.5 times 10 to the 25th power molecules per second. That's about 2 kilograms of HCN vented into space every second, a figure that stands out among known comets but is not without precedent. The coma's sheer size and the steady output of cyanide suggest active outgassing, driven by sunlight warming ancient ices as Atlas approaches the inner solar system. Jets of vapor and dust stream outward, sculpted by radiation pressure and solar wind, forming an asymmetric halo that signals both motion and volatility. Yet the chemistry is more than a curiosity, it's the baseline for what a natural comet should look like before perihelion. The presence of HCN, along with traces of water and carbon monoxide, anchors Atlas in the familiar territory of solar system comets. Spectral signatures match those catalogued in previous interstellar visitors, though the ratios and intensities hint at a unique formation history. For now, the coma's behavior supports a natural explanation, a porous, volatile rich body shedding mass as it nears the sun. This baseline, measured before the critical solar encounter, will become the reference against which any post-perihelion changes are judged. If the chemistry shifts, or if the coma fragments in unexpected ways, those deviations will stand out against the spectroscopist's careful September record. A hollow shell racing toward the sun is more than a physical puzzle. It's a scenario with testable consequences. Imagine a structure built not to endure, but to deploy. At perihelion, when sunlight and gravity are at their fiercest, a fragile body could fragment naturally, scattering debris in random directions. Yet there's another possibility, one that scientists like Avi Loeb are determined to keep on the table. Intentional deployment. If 3i slash Atlas is engineered, perihelion offers a unique moment for action. Instead of chaotic breakup, the shell could release smaller units, probes or sensors, each with its own trajectory like dandelion seeds catching a gust. In this case, the evidence would be concrete. Post-perihelion, astronomers would look for discrete, non-random tracks radiating from the original path, some fragments accelerating or steering away from the sun, not drifting passively. Patterns in the debris field, straight lines, sudden changes in speed, or clusters moving as if under control would stand out against the backdrop of natural chaos. Loeb's Galileo project is preparing for exactly this test. Their checklist is clear. Track every outbound fragment, measure velocities, compare with models of natural comet breakup. If the data show randomness, the engineered scenario fades. But if the sky reveals order, the implications are profound. The days after perihelion will decide which story the evidence supports. ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, built to scan the Martian surface, was pressed into service as 3i slash Atlas swept past Mars in early October. The instrument team turned its high-resolution camera off the planet and out into the black, capturing a series of five-second exposures, each one stretched to the technical limit. The target was nearly 50,000 times dimmer than anything the orbiter was designed to image. Raw frames showed little more than a scatter of digital static. In most, the suspected comet was indistinguishable from the background noise. Processing pipelines, tuned for crisp Martian terrain, struggled to extract any reliable signal. Analysts at the European Space Agency flagged the preliminary images as likely noise, not confident enough to claim even a faint detection. The challenge wasn't just faintness. Mars orbiters relay data back to Earth in tight windows, 
competing with planetary science priorities and downlink bottlenecks. Each batch of images passed through layers of calibration, compression, and review before reaching public archives. With the object so close to the sun from Earth's vantage, there was no way to cross-check these ambiguous frames against ground-based observations. By the time any processed data became public, scheduled for late November, weeks had passed since perihelion. In that gap, any sudden change in Atlas's trajectory or structure could go unrecorded. For the analysts, every ambiguous pixel was a reminder. The most critical moment might be hidden in the noise, and the only clues could arrive too late to catch in real time. A body from interstellar space, captured by the Sun, would rewrite the rules of planetary science. For researchers, it would mean the first permanent sample of extrasolar material, an object to study for generations. For defense planners, the scenario is less academic. Internal memos circulating at NASA and the US Space Force during the blackout window outlined contingency models. If an engineered object used a perihelion burn to shed velocity, surveillance protocols would escalate. No agency has released public guidance or threat assessments, but the existence of these drafts, even in redacted form, signals a shift in how such arrivals are modeled. A single headline about capture or probe deployment could trigger sentiment shocks far beyond the science community. Yet for all the speculation, the evidence remains king. To judge extraordinary claims, observers need a clear checklist. First, watch for a sudden change in outbound velocity, an abrupt drop visible in astrometric residuals that cannot be explained by cometary outgassing. Next, look for organized debris, discrete tracks or fragments accelerating in non-random directions, not the chaotic spray of natural breakup. Cross-reference these with atmospheric anomaly logs, especially reports of UAP-like events synchronized to perihelion. The data sets to watch are public, optical and radar observations from ground and space, polarization studies, and citizen science occultation campaigns in the Southern Hemisphere. Archive channels from NASA, ESA, CNSA, and the Galileo Project will release recovery images, trajectory solutions, and raw sensor data in November and December. Falsifiability is the rule. If the outbound path shows no step change, if fragments drift randomly, if no correlated anomalies appear, the story returns to nature. The test is not what's possible, but what the data confirm. On October 29, 2025, 3I Atlas will reach perihelion at 1.36 astronomical units from the Sun, a fact verified by both Atlas survey logs and NASA trajectory data. Its near ecliptic, 5 degree approach is statistically rare for interstellar objects, as confirmed by orbital models. Although photometric readings estimate a mass of 33 billion tons, the October 3rd Mars flyby produced no detectable gravitational effect, an inconsistency documented in ESA and NASA navigation records. Imaging gaps during the superior conjunction blackout are a matter of published telescope schedules, leaving a critical window unobserved. To date, no classified defense or market advisories have been released regarding the object's potential capture or artificial origin. Whether 3i Atlas is a porous comet or something engineered, only post-perihelion debris patterns and velocity changes, expected in late November datasets, will offer answers. As of now, the evidence highlights both the limits of current observation and the extraordinary nature of 3i Atlas. Its next move remains a matter of record, not speculation.